Hello fellow map makers and oh, welcome to this week's live mapping session. I am Ralph Schemann of Profantasy Software and I'm hoping to show you a bit of campaign cartographer and dungeon designer tonight as usual. Um, it looks like we Sue has some connection problems tonight. She was usually doing the moderation in the chat. Um, we'll have to do without her for the moment, it looks like. And uh, I'll try to keep an eye on the chat myself for any questions. So go ahead and post them and forgive me if I might overlook something because I'm also mapping at the same time. Good. All right. You're welcome, Kent. Good to uh, get you up and running there with the uh, mapping. So, oh, perhaps Sue is coming back on, but I'm not. She's at, uh, at least shown as online again, but uh, we'll see. Uh, tonight I wanted uh, to delve into dungeons and specifically I want to show you how to use the multi-level feature of the map wizard uh, to set up multiple levels for a dungeon and copy stuff uh, between those levels to have matching connections between the different levels in stairs or trapdoors and see how we can create a nice multi-level dungeon from that. Okay, there's Sue. Say hi to Sue. Fingers crossed she'll be uh, around okay. Okay, so let's get started with the new map wizard. I'm gonna go up to our file toolbar here above the catalog toolbar and the drawing area and click the new map icon. And that brings up the drawing wizard, which first asks us for the map type we want to draw. And we are going for the dungeons, as said in this, in the announcement for the video. I'm going to click next, and then we can choose between all the different dungeon drawing styles we have available. And we are going to go with the basic Dungeon Designer 3 style for tonight. I'm going to click next and here we're going to set the dimensions and I'm going to do a fairly small area of 200 by 160 feet to be able to see something on the screen here and be able to get at least halfway finished tonight. And now we're not going to click finish at this point as we usually do, but instead we are going to advance through the rest of the new map wizard pages. We're going to click next and on the next one we can set our grid options and the uh, fill style that we use for the background, but I'm fine with the option as they are and I'm going to do a grid overlay later. So we'll do no changes here, just click next again. And here we are going to enable multiple levels. And um, there we can set how many ground and below, above ground and below ground levels we want. We're going to use one above ground level so we can show the surface above our dungeon level and two below ground levels. So we have uh, multiple levels that we can connect to each other and the outside drawing is automatic if you do the above ground option. So it's grayed out here. We do have a naming scheme to choose and this is if you're mostly if you're using starships or buildings for city designer you can set different types of labeling but we also have a specific one for dungeons, we'll, we'll just call the different levels by number. And then we are finished with the new web visit and we'll click the appropriate button. And as you can see here from the previous test I've uh, done with the multi-level layout, Campaign Gatherer will automatically create several files 
one for each level and link those together. So from one test dungeon I already have three files in here, but I'll do, uh, let's call this differently, let's call it the live dungeon. It's alive! And here we are. One little quirk of the multi-level is that it doesn't zoom in to the extents right away. So we're going to do that now. And here we have almost the same as a typical new dungeon and except for this little navigation menu on the bottom right here. And that shows us the current level we're on. We're on level one of the dungeon and we do have a two other maps available. We can go to the outside map and we can go to the level two map. So just to show you, we can just uh, click on one. These are hyperlinked. Save the current changes and then we are on the outside level. And the same, we can go to level two. It's uh, worth it going through the different ones to start and saving them in the correct view. So we'll save this and we see everything is, seems to be okay. And go back to level one. And this is where we'll start our little mapping expedition. So what do we want to map uh, tonight? So I was thinking we might um, build some earthen tunnels to start with, perhaps some, some old mine or some uh, scaven tunnels or something under a rural area. And so we want to start out with a little earth texture background and wooden walls and see how we can build from there. So we are going to start with the room in the center of our map and for that we are going to go up to the left toolbar and click the add room button. And here we can see we already have our fill styles selected. And I'm going to go with the rectangular room laid out to start with and we want to change this a bit. I want the floor background to be a rather dark earthen color. So I'm going to go for the gray brown dirt and perhaps the slightly darker version. And we now also put a, we'll put a foreground on the one and for that if we just choose another full solid texture that doesn't do anything for us. It will just cover up the uh, background texture below, but we do have a few textures available which are partially transparent. And these can be nicely overlaid with the uh, background to give a texture uh, pattern effect, which gives more interest in our map. And for that I'm gonna say we're doing a little brighter, some dust and drier mud on top of the dark background. So we're going to choose one of the brighter browns. And you can also see in the little preview that we get this nice broken pattern on the floor. Next up is the wall. We do have a few wood textures that we can use for the background. We can choose a bright one, I think a pine texture would go quite well with this and mm, does it no we, i think this looks too new we do something something darker let's go with the ball notch you can go with the horizontal or vertical layout of the planks in the wood uh, grain and that doesn't really matter at all okay so and perhaps we are going to make the wall a little bit narrow. Oh no, we're going to stay with the foot. It's perhaps a bit thick for a wooden wall, theoretically, but at least it will be nicely visible on our map. And then we're just going to put um, room down. You see the grid is activated. You see the light, little light dots. We can actually make these a little bit uh, more obvious by choosing a different dot style. 
uh, you can see them more clearly. And if you check our grid, we can see it's a five foot angled grid. Uh, it's not so really what I want. I'm uh, gonna go with a plain five foot two snap grid. And I'm gonna also turn on the cursor snap. That means we see our mouse snapping uh, from point to point. Okay, I'll show you the, the difference because this can be quite uh, convenient to turn off and on and off while mapping. So without the cursor snap, you can see I can move the mouse freely between the points, but if I click a, a point, the clicked node will snap to the, um, the grid point. If I turn on the cursor snap, the mouse always goes to the grid points. We have uh, one snap between the points, that's why we can be between them, but I can't go any uh, more off the point grid than this. So let's just put uh, room down here. One point is five foot, so I have a good overview of how large my room is going to be. So let's do it 20 foot by 15 foot. And then we can zoom in a bit, turn on our sheet effects. And there's our first earthen floor, wooden wall, room on the map. So let's say I want to have the entrance to our underground area as a trapdoor in the ceiling of this. So how do I, I'm normally showing the floor, how do I show a symbol, something in the, in the ceiling? Oh, there's different options, you can uh, do dashed lines or something, but what I like to do is make it partially transparent on a bitmap like this. So for that we can just add a new symbol sheet. Let's put it above all the other symbols. Add a recall symbol ceiling. There we go. And we're going to go to the up and down catalog and we're going to put a trapdoor right smack in the middle here. No, not quite. In it. We'll just use one of the nice grid squares to put it in. Here we go. And now we just need to make the symbol ceiling a bit transparent by adding a transparency in fact effect. So 50% opacity sounds good. And there you can see our trapped or partially transparent on the map. In comparison, if I was to put one uh, on the symbols flat sheet on the floor, let's turn it around by using the arrow keys. See, that's how it's going to look on the floor. Might even make this a bit more obvious by putting a black outline or something around this. But for now, we're just going to delete this trapdoor again. And now I'm going to think for a moment what is on the outside of the uh, above this thing. So we might have perhaps a little hut hidden beneath the trees in and with a room and the trapdoor that leads down in our dungeon. So what we're going to do, we're just going to copy uh, the chapter and put it on the same sh in, uh, spot in the outside drawing to mark our entrance to the dungeon. So I'm gonna use the copy, um, the clipboard copy, Control C, select our chapter, press D for do it, and now I'm gonna put in the origin 0, 0.0 for our copy. That means if I put 0, 0 in the pasting command on the next map, uh, the chapter will go in the exactly same location. So 
Let's open up the outside map. Okay, well now I'm going to do Control V for the paste. Type in 0, 0, and there's the trapdoor at exactly the same spot. You can see um, copying the symbol over also adds the sheet or we used previously on uh, this here we can move that up in the same location in the list but obviously the trapdoor is not in the ceiling and in, uh, in this map so it's going to be on the floor and for that we'll just use the move to sheet command here by right clicking the sheets and effects button select our trapdoor before do it and put it on the symbols flat sheet so while we're working here, we can do some editing on this map. For example, for the outside map, I don't need this plain brown background. So what I'm going to want to do is change the background of the map. For that, I'm going to use the change properties command and select by layer the default background Polygon and texture in Campaign Cartographer is always on the background layer. So I'm going to select everything by background. You can see this, it's only one entity that's selected. I'm going to press D for do it. And here we can use, just already nicely pre selected, the dirt and grass background, which is more pro appropriate for an outside map. Here we go. And perhaps uh, it's a bit too small for my taste. I wanted to ex uh, make it a bit less repeating. See, it's only scaled to 10 feet. Say so we add the scaling to 25 feet. And that way it looks a little bit nicer. While we're at it, we can I also put in uh, the hut we were talking about on this map. So I'm gonna, instead of using the room command directly, I'm gonna go via the floor tool. Just right click that. Gonna look for a nice wooden background. We've got the pine wood. wood. Like it's, it's a bit larger than the, the cellar below. Here's our wooden floor. Again, we can put a little bit of dust or yeah, sawdust or rushes on the floor by adding a second texture with some transparent areas. Just draw that across the existing one. And the nice effect that we perhaps that we can do here is uh, the dust might already have settled over the trapdoor. So what I'm gonna do, I'm um, gonna repurpose our symbol ceiling uh, sheet by moving that up below the floors. Oh, actually, no, I'm a bit, because um, I would need to change a few things because the wooden texture and the dust is on the same sheet. So I can't use, uh, put a sheet, I'll uh, put the chapter on the sheet, a sheet between them. So instead, I'm going to need a new sheet for dust. Oh, dusty surface. Oh, we can do that too. So I'm gonna add a new sheet floors sawdust and move that down so it's above the flat symbols. And now I'm gonna move to sheet by fill style. I use the one transparent one to the new floor sheet. 
and now you can see the dust texture is nicely above the chapter. Now we just need some, some walls. Uh, let's take a uh, we don't have any wooden walls here in this style. So what we're going to do, we are going to use the uh, current fill and current width tool. Choose the fill style to the texture we want. And the width to one. And then we're just going to add the walls here. And you see this happens because the polygon is via the draw, draw path and not the polygon. So what we can do is we can just right click the explode button here and say path to poly. Select by prior. So the entity we just, we've just drawn. Press D for do it. And there's our wooden wall on the hutch. One more thing, I want to add a little doorway to this. Or we could also add a couple windows. So let's put a door down and some windows, shuttered ones. It's a bit large perhaps, so let's make them a bit smaller. Two thirds. And there's our little hut in the woods. We know now that the chapter is on exactly the same spot. And then I'm going to go back to our level one map here. And we are back in our underground earthen floor wooden wall tunnel system. The question so far on the YouTube chat doesn't look like it. No, no the chat, there's chat enough, but just not any questions yet. So let's see how we can continue. We're going to go and add some tunnels by uh, doing the add corridor command. If we left click that, that brings up our tool to set fill style, wall width and everything again. And we're gonna want to stay with the existing stuff. So we'll just leave that. Five foot is nicely narrow for the tunnels here. And then we'll just put in a little tunnel labyrinth. You can see um, if you right click the corridor button it will just do the corridor command again with the same settings you, that you had before. B uh, connects the existing the uh, corridor to the existing ones, to the existing walls. That's nice to um, break a gap into the wall. So it's good for some uh, corridors. And finally, let's, let's add a few extra rooms here. In this case, we'll have the wall um, blocking the uh, corridor at the room entrance, but that's fine. We can use our symbols or door symbols to do the gaps that we need. So see if you continue the room uh, you can switch between different uh, types by 
putting in the numbers. We are usually still at the two rectangle type rooms, but if I wanted to do a polygonal room at this point, I'm just going to put in the four. And now I can draw my room as a polygon. All right, so um, I might want to add a few more corridors to make this a little bit more of a labyrinth down here. So I'm going to switch to the corridor tool again and connect some existing corridors and rooms here. And then we want to perhaps have a place where the earthen walls give way to some older stone structures and uh, do a transition there. For that, let's do that up here and say, oh, let's first do a bit of the, the existing corridors here. and then switch to a different one. Now we're gonna... We might leave the dirt for a bit, or we can do that later. Let's uh, first switch to a tiled floor here. And then to some sto stone walls. All cobbles are nice for that or perhaps something more, a little bit more visible here on the screen, on the video, and I'm going to go with the marble walls for that, because it's a nice contrast to the rest. And then I'm going to just continue the corridor here. And then add a little bit of a room in the same style. Actually, we might at this point turn off the, the, the dirt texture and just gonna draw the room ac across the map border here so we don't get a wall right on the map border. Instead, it will show up beyond the mail map border. And this is a good opportunity to show you how to set up a little uh, map screen that hides stuff that extends the map border like this here on an older template like the Dungeon Designer 3 map is. It doesn't have a screen set up. For that, uh, just add a new sheet right below the map border. Let's call it screen. It should be right above the map border in the list. Also add a, I just, that's not strictly necessary, but I like to keep my things neat and ordered in the map. So I'll do the same on the layer. And let's make that solid and white. So it blends in with the drawing background. And now we're just gonna take a polygon tool and zoom out a bit and draw a shape around our map making area. And then we need to go all the way around so we don't cover up our map mapping area. And here we are. As you can see, the drawing screen is uh, nicely hidden. 
Okay, Sue so suggests that I uh, make the dots less visible again because it hides too, ma too much of the map. That's quite possible on the video. I'm sorry for that if those got in the way a bit. I'm gonna right click on the grid button to do that and turn the grid buttons to their lowest, uh, smallest possible size again. I hope that's better. See, and here we do have the uh, wall, which I want to add a door into. So let's put an old solid stone door in here. But it's perhaps open at the moment. So it's looking good. Oops, that was a misclick. Let's do this instead. Oh, okay. I wanted to have a break in the wall. Uh, that's mirror the door. No, this is a bit set up strangely, so we just use a straight door instead. That's going to be a bit easier. If you have trouble breaking a wall with one of the half-open doors, you can always use a closed one and then delete the symbol. So let's erase the symbol and put in an open door. Like this. And now we do need a little bit of dirt spilling into the room. This is a bit too cut off. For that we can just use our floor tools again. Look for the matching dirt. Uh, here we are. We use the number two number two dirt and for this I'm going to turn off the snap in the grid so I can draw more irregular shape turn on the snap again as I finish this and here's my earth tech dust dirt texture extending into the room So we do need to go to our second level below ground with the dungeon. And I could just add a uh, stairway and do the same as I did with the, um, with the uh, trapdoor. I copied on the other sheet, but I want to do a little bit different. I want to add a, a pit and a open space that leads down into the level below. So let's choose this room to do that. And first we do need a door in this room here. So I'm going to go with a simple wooden door. There it is. Then I'm going to zoom in a bit. And now I do need a hole. I could just for example take a trap door or one of the trap symbols we do have a pit in here but it's a spike pit showing below that might work well actually let's let's do that let's uh, try this so it's pretty large and doesn't look very deep let's see whether we can make it look a little bit deeper first we're going to put it on these symbols flat sheet and make it a bit smaller. So let's make it um, size 0.5, off size. Put it here in the middle of the room. And now we're going to try out something and do a little extension of the walls around them so that it looks deeper. For that we do need a new sheet, just above pit walls 
and we will choose a, a color matching our walls here and first just gonna draw a polygon run around our pit And what we're going to add now is a bevel effect. So the length of our be uh, bevel should be 5 feet. That's um, the width of the polygon we've done here. And for the rest, I'm just going to see, uh, take a look first how this looks. Let's move this out of the way a bit. No, that's not wide enough. The bevel, the bevel should be larger, I think. Perhaps we should actually, perhaps better use a light, lighted bevel instead. No smoothing, straight. Let's have a look how this looks. Yep, still too. Oh, actually, what I should be doing, what I'm doing wrong is that I've, um, this should be full and below the uh, symbol, so the bevel doesn't uh, go from the inside out. So we're going to need to change our setup here first a bit. What we're going to do is we're going to erase this, draw just simple rectangle and move the pit walls one up so it's below the symbols flat sheet and this is looking a bit better so let's see whether we can um, invert the um, the direction so let's turn off the global sun direction because it's not a upwards going thing that uh, the uh, shadows on but it goes downward instead so we are gonna do the opposite of 315 is uh, minus 180, 135 degrees. I hope my math is correct there. And apply this. Yes, it's mm, because the symbol itself doesn't have much of a doesn't have a bevel itself. It's not looking that correct. Let's see what happens if we do it 90 degrees. That looks a little bit better. And let's make the lightness doesn't do that. Let's make the intensity lower so it's not as strong. Okay, let's Let's say that's okay for now. You prob could probably do this better. Perhaps we could even put a bit of transparency on this, but we're going to leave it at this for now and just add a little glow effect on the outside. Dark glow effect, not very strong, just a foot radius. That's okay. And do the same on the inside. Perhaps we can copy this effect and do the same on the inside. Okay, this could be done better, but I keep it at this uh, for now. It's going to serve our purposes. For example, we could make the the walls darker. This is something I can definitely do at this point. And change color. And make this a tad darker. Oh, well, this is already good. Okay, and then we can use the same technique as previously. So we're gonna take this entity and copy it via the clipboard or the entities. Do it, choose zero, zero as the origin. 
and we go to the level 2 and use Control v to paste and place it at 0, 0. There's our pit and we can now basically hide the pit walls. We, we wouldn't even need to have copied them because they are obviously not visible on this. The pit will just be on the floor. And here we can say uh, add a cave around our pit where the poor victims falling into there will land. So I'm just gonna open the cave tools dirt effect and for now at the cave floor and now do some little nice little nasty stuff and scatter some bounds around here. Turn off snap and actually bones should be placed on the symbols flat sheet. So because they would be lying flat under the ground and not casting shadows. Let's scatter some bones around here. And we do have some yes, a skeleton, perhaps someone survived for a little while and he got hit by a rock fall. And we have the nice monster skeleton where everybody wonders how this got into here. We've got some skulls. And we'll need to build an exit from here later on. But we do now have a point where the unfortunate victims can drop down from the upper level down into this lower level one. So let's go back to level one. And here we are, and we do want to build a no more typical way to go down onto the lower level with a stairway somewhere. So let's see how we can uh, do that. We're going to do another site entrance from our wooden or earthen labyrinth. With that, we're going to switch back to our previous one. Turn on the floor. floor foreground again. Switch back to our horizontal walnut walls. And now I'm not going to do a break in this wall because I want to add a secret door here. See, we do have stuff like adding this and we're not going to put it on the wall features sheet, but we are going to do put this on Game Master only. So we can let, later hide this easily. We could do the same with the, with the doors. See uh, the normal wall features are use breaking uh, entities that will uh, put a gap into the wall, but we could load up the different wall features catalog. We've got the non-cutting version here, and put the this also on the game master only sheet. Put this door there. 
and now we can just hide the game master only layer go back to the wall features of the molds hide the game master only oh we uh, somehow missed putting that on the correct layer so we're going to just redo that change layer select the symbol do it and put it on the game master only layer and that is gone So now we are going back to our Dwarven Halls. Going to go to the flex down background again. No foreground for the wall. We use the marble bitmap. Now we're just going to again just put the edge of the room beyond the map border and now we want to do a break in the wall basically where the wall collapsed and opened the tunnel uh, to the tunnel behind and for that we just need we don't need a door we just need a gap in the wall and for that we do have our wall cutter symbols these will just cut a gap with the appropriate size here into the wall. So we just grab this, place it on the wall and we notice an error. The symbol actually cut the floor texture behind and up the wall. So for that we are going to take a quick look at our symbol to fix that. You know, get the extra credits fixing a symbol that doesn't work as expected. We're going to go into the symbol manager via the symbols menu, symbol manager select the wall cutter symbol open up an editing window and here's our symbol for that so we, what we're gonna do we are gonna list the properties of this control point it's on the correct layer walls but it's probably uh, see uh, if we edit the options here Align and cut on insertion, keep dynamic track scale, that's turned off correctly, but because it's always should be uh, the 10 foot. No, this is, looks correct, so the problem will be in the symbol options. Symbol, symbol manager, locate our symbol again, click the options. And here's the problem, see the symbol should have uh, this option activated control points which is the uh, what controls the cut only cut on the same layer and as we saw it's on the same uh, layer walls and we activate that it will only cut entities on the layer walls otherwise it will cut the first entity it finds below it and that's the in this case would be the floor texture that's what what happened so we saved this in the map here in the drawing and that means if we select the symbol again it should now work correctly and it does this means because I've only done the change within this drawing it will only work correctly in this drawing if you start a new drawing and pick the symbol uh, from the from there again it will have the same problem again so to fix it in the original symbol you will need to open the symbol catalog and fix it in there So what we're going to do now is we are going to add a little bit of floor here. The dirt type of floor. And here we are. Using the dirt. Actually it's probably going to be the same as... No, it's not quite the same as our background. Well, that's good. And again use the dust texture, uh, the dirt texture, the broken one to with turning of snap to spill this into the room. And then we're just gonna add some rocks around this. See we have some nice 
large brown rocks here, which make a great cave-in. And this way, by digging a little bit or climbing through the gaps in the rocks, the adventurers can get into the dwarven ruins this way. And now we're gonna continue the dwarven section. We're gonna make this wider. Obviously corridors are wider here. Connect this to the wall. Turn on our snap again. And here we are gonna add a proper stairway. So it's gonna be a stairway down. We can use, the, if you don't want to use the big fat uh, red arrow, you can use choose the very color one and set some uh, something more subdued. So stairway is going down here. And some old flat. And there's our stairway going down. So let's say this is still a bit of a ruined area. Let's add some stones. Which also means we probably need a little bit, a bit of uh, dust on the floor here so it doesn't look so neat. And for that we are just going to go to our floor, drawing tools again and choose the light grey dust. You can follow the walls easily by just using the grid or you, what you can also do, you can use the trace option. And there's some grey dust on our stone floor. And then again at this point we'd take uh, the stairway and copy it to the clipboard reference point 0, 0.0 go to level 2 and paste at 0, 0.0 so there's our stairway and now you can see it's uh, in the downward pointing stairway which here obviously should be upward pointing so what we're going to do we're just going to choose the same color and we could just simply move that around and replace that but i'm going to show you a little bit what you can do i'm going to grab the up but going stairway instead and not place it in the map. I'll just click it once so it gets added to the symbol definitions in the map. Go to the symbol manager. Gonna grab my downward pointing stair, click replace and replace it with the upwards pointing stair. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna rotate it so the arrow actually points upward. Oh, actually, yeah, we need to do that. Non-visual, we're gonna use the non-visual rotate. Do it, rotate by 180 degrees and choose the center point. Let's turn on the cursor snap again so I know what I'm clicking on the correct position. Here we go. And there's our stairway. And here we could continue the corridor on the other side. See, we could either 
have this go into yes let's let's do that let's actually connect this to the cave system see we do want a little bit of more of an organic uh, transition between the corridor and the cave background so what I'm going to do I'm going to use the node editor to move this a little bit the problem is when I now try to move the ball I'm going to use the move the floor instead again because node editor is the one time the uh, uh, one entity edit I can't use it multiple edits at the same time but what I can do I can um, use the stretch command edit transform or reshape stretch select both do it and select only this node to move there we go now I need a bit of a transition between the floors and for that our what we actually can do first is turn off the snap and add a few points here on the floor texture and then I'm gonna go for the dust texture again which I can never find here we go and just go draw this across here for the transition and then we'd probably go on with the corridor on the other side have this be a break in as well just like on the upper level and we continue the map from there so see uh Okay, let's see whether there are any question, extra stuff. So, so still having problems. Okay. Yeah, Remy's taken over, but he doesn't look like he had any questions anyway. Oh, yes, I can see your PM channel on Slack as well, Remy. That should not be the problem. But it looks like people are just watching, which is nice enough. And we've already at the one hour mark, quicker than I thought. And I'm perhaps got a little bit less done than I hoped for, but at least I've been working on all of the levels a little bit. Let's go through them again. Let's, uh, we are on the level two. Here we'd have some more broken down dwarven ruins and we've got to find the monster here that's using that pit trap to get its nice its snacks delivered nice and easily. It's gonna be living here somewhere, I guess, for payers to hunt or run into. Level one we have our little labyrinth, which would need a little bit some more doors and some extra stuff. And the connection to the dwarven ruins further north and outside we've just got our little shack here which we need to surround by some trees let's just add some trees here for example can just grab the tree symbols and scatter some of those around our cottage And what I like to do is set off uh, the building with a little bit of extra texture on the ground. So I'm going to go for the terrain here, some dirt terrain, do another snap. And that way. You can build this up as a little outside terrain map, even use it as a battle map. That's right, that's something else I wanted to show you. Just a quick uh, look at the 
at the, adding the grid. Say you want the grid on this map. What I often like to do nowadays is not to make the grid in black, but in white instead. So just choose the color first and then um, do draw hex or square overlay. A square grid without any labels. Five foot to the grid. Apply. Oh, I switched back to the green color accidentally. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm just going to undo and redo that. X square grid. Draw X square overlay. Apply. And what I do then is add a transparency effect to the grid so it doesn't show up so strongly. Could just make that a bit less obvious, just 30% opacity. And that way the grid is nice and unobtrusive. So we've got some questions going in. Remy Scott's could select them. Thank you very much. Um, got a question, does the level menu render on the final map? Yes, it would if you let it. If you want to export the map later and don't want to show the menu, you can go see where this is located. It's on the sheet key. So what you do before you render the map, export it as a JPEG or print it or whatever, you just hide the key sheets and there it's gone. Well, they, we can just later show them again if you've got to navigate around the maps. So yes, if you don't do anything about it, they will print or export with the rest of the map. Trevor, can you change the navigation look on the map? Yes, you can. These are entities like any other uh, any other here in uh, campaign cartographer. So what you could do is uh, if you want to put a texture on this, for this it would be probably convenient to for a moment hide everything but the relevant parts. So you could just go in, change properties, do it and add um, texture here, say just a basic stone. Or let's just for fun's sake take a brick texture show the key text and here change the text properties and make this something a little bit nicey let's choose the book in here font uh, the buccaneer font doesn't have the, the numbers in it so that's not a good idea change text properties No, that was the fill style accidentally. Change text properties. Sometimes I'm too quick for my own good. And let's choose bridge north. There you go. And you could now also put a bit of a effect on this. Let's make it an outer glow. It's bright. Um, what much blur to unit risk range? City is fine. Well, it's a bit too large still. So make this 0.5 and this is probably smaller. One. There we go. Show everything again. But it's editing uh, this style. But you know, what you can also do now with the key stuff here, add a bit of a effect. Also, in glow, dark one inside, two foot, map units. 
and there, work with that and make the menu nice. You can also add your own stuff. If you want to go into the details of the, um, the links, what you will need to do is show your hyperlinks. On the view menu, you've got the show hyperlinks option, and then you can go in and see that there's actually hyperlink entities in here, which you can also edit to uh, change links and add your own and stuff. But this is going to be a bit too far in this in tonight's mapping session. And question from Sue, can you do multi-level city and overland maps as well? Yes, you can. The only thing you don't have, you don't have a standard naming um, convention that you can pick on when creating the map. You would have to pick one of the existing ones and change the names afterwards if you want to do something uh, different. But yes, it's uh, not a function that's technically limited to buildings or dungeons or starships. You can do that on any map you want. Okay, I hope you like this little excursion into multi-level mapping and uh, see how you can do large sprawling dungeons that are not all on one map with this. And I hope you have a good evening, rest of the day or whatever it is where you are on this beautiful earth. And see you again next week. Have a good time. Bye bye.